what I'm most looking forward to on this tour uh, is likely the the exchange and the reveal of the way a songwriter show works. The CMAs have invited uh, a, a, an interesting group of people together. They're both some of them are hit songwriters, some of them are artists, some of them are hit songwriters that are artists, um, and uh, they put us all on a stage together, and we're all kind of sitting on a microphone. And my brother's coming, so he'll be there. And then uh, I guess it's Brett James on this, and Chris Young, and myself, and Bob DePiro. And while we're familiar with each other, we don't really know each other's repertoire. We, we, we may know their hit song that they wrote, um, but may not know how they're going to play it or what they're going to play. And we kind of don't disclose this stuff to each other. So it has one part, you're coming to see a singer-songwriter perform a writer songwriter and then it has another part that is you kind of play on each other's songs as the song is unfolding so there's a little bit of kind of a pickup jam session thing that happens if you can imagine the 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 mindset of jazz right where you don't know what you're doing but you you're just gonna go express yourself and then you put in the intentionality of songwriting and then the, uh, the craft of country music, which is this ability to, um, to focus and to turn emotion on the dime and a lyric. And you put all that on stage together, and uh, that's what we're doing. The audience has to be in on it. They have to have uh, committed to us doing like triple back flips and, and whether we're going to stick the landing or not. <laughs> you know, they, 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 everybody knows that we're either going to fall or we're going to rise to the occasion. And that risk is um, interesting. And, and I, I love that the, uh, an international audience may or may not know this. And so watching them discover it with us while we're discovering it is going to be one of the most exciting things of the night. Well, the English audience I've experienced two or three times. And many times, they've been different depending on the context. My very first show, which is kind of fantastic, was at Royal Albert Hall when I was 24. I was opening for Melissa Etheridge. And I, I vividly remember um, walking out on stage, finishing the first song, and uh, people clapped and then they got quiet and we were just like waiting like it was a library or something. And it was very intimidating being a kid who's, you know, been playing in, in clubs and dirty bars in the Southeast. So uh, I, I took that with me, and then the next time I played um, in, in London was at a, a Shepherd's Bush Theater. And it was completely different. It was now, it was just like a, a thousands of people ready to see Sugarland screaming their heads off. So there's always been an interesting conversation when. Uh, people would ask me, you know, what are the records that influenced you when you grew up, and you know, what's your favorite song, and I think a lot of times they're expecting, because of the, the success and the genre that I'm in, for me to name um, a Dolly Parton song, or uh, a George Jones song, and, um, and the, those I'm huge fans of, you know, I grew up where Dolly Parton was, but I had a unique experience, because I kind of came of my musical age in the early 80s, and one of my first shows was uh, being dragged in to uh, Adam and the Ants opening for The Clash, you know? And um, when I was 15, I just wore out Unforgettable Fire, you know, the U2 album. But what's so amazing to me is that I learned from those people what a song means and what being emotional means. The politics of the heart, that all came from those bands, you know? like. Uh, don't think that when Jennifer and I wave a white flag and spray paint love on it that it isn't coming from, you know, me sitting and watching those U2 shows and it, it changing me, you know? And don't think that, you know, when you see me doubled over on a guitar, like, trying to make this little poor acoustic guitar get louder, that it's not because I didn't see Joe Strummer do it. My version of country music has been shaped by the progressive rock music of the 80s coming out of Ireland and London. And who would have thought it? I did get to write with Bob. 
he's an amazing writer. He's really um, very much uh, akin to, he writes the similar way that I do, which is you just kind of feel your way through it, and the braver you are, the more apt you are to make a mistake, the, the better the chances are that you're gonna make something great. One of the songs we wrote together was a song called Wait Not an Angel, and we wrote it with uh, he and I and Jeff Cohen. And, you know, it has a lot of examples of what makes Bob DiPiro a great writer. Um, one of the, these wonderful, the, the, the better the writer, the less you hear them in the music. Like it becomes uh, uh, effortless to hear the lyric against a melody. It's as if it already existed for 30 years and we just never heard that song before. And that's, that's what Bob has such a command over is both me as a singer, but also me as a writer. When I sing the songs that we're writing, it's just effortless. It just rolls right off your tongue. And uh, you can't imagine that that song never existed before. My brother Brandon is uh, probably the most talented person I know. Um, he will be on, on tour with us during the CMA Songwriters Tour. And uh, he usually will show up on any record and on any stage that I am because uh, I am so much better with him than I am without him. Uh, he and I have been playing music since he was three, I was six. Um, I trust him with everything. How is, how is our touring different? Well, um, he's more curious, taller, better looking, and has better tattoos. So, <laughs> uh, again, he makes me better. <laughs> I'm super excited to play the O2 show, especially having just previously toured there for weeks before. Um, I, I think it's just great. It's a lot of fun for me because, you know, probably a lot of folks hadn't seen me play by myself before. And, um, you know, they can go come get their Springsteen on, you know, and they just don't know it yet. Um, it, that's exciting. I love that I'm on the bill with Little Big Town and Vince Gill and Tim McGraw, all three of those acts who have supported me in unbelievable ways. Uh, Vince Gill gave me my first show, went first tour. Um, Little Big Town, that was our first headlining tour. We, we had Little Big Town with us. Um, we have, we've been Grammy nominated together with Little Big Town. It's just some of the, my favorite people in the world. And then Tim McGraw, I'll never forget, he and his wife stood up. And they were the first people to stand up when we won, uh, uh, no, when we didn't win, when we performed for the first time on television at the ACMs like a million years ago. George Strait was sick and they put us in and we got this awesome opportunity and we finished our last note and nobody else in the room knew who we were and those two people were in the front row and they stood up and I like to think they shamed everybody else in the room and this, no, 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 but I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. I, I owe those all these people so much. That's the beautiful thing about being a writer is it's much like being an actor. You get to try on different characters. You get to explore different parts of yourself and, and saying words or things you might not normally say or being more poignant or more uh, sentimental than you might normally be and <laughs> uh, or sappy if you're me. It's, it's an exciting thing to be a writer and a performer and then to hear your songs performed or be able to interpret songs that you might uh, your voice might not have been the defining piece of, but everyone knows. That's really interesting to me sometimes, is a lot of folks come up to me like, oh man, I knew Baby Girl, but I didn't know it the way you sing it. Now it has a, I had no idea that's the context in which it was born. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of neat, right? It's kind of a sad bearded version. <laughs> Um, although I do like to sleep in, I love breakfast. Um, so it, it's one of my favorite things, one of the things I love to do with my brother. It's one of the things I love to do when I travel because normally when we're on tour, starting around noon, you're the boss, you know, and, and you gotta go to work. And uh, I love my job, but that also keeps me at the venue. So uh, the only time I really get off campus in any kind of tour is in the morning and breakfast. And so whatever sightseeing I'll do will be between when I wake up, when I eat breakfast, and when I gotta be somewhere. I am just 
in the strangest, simple way, I'm just so excited to meet everybody. Because I can't wait for you to hear these songs. 